Here we go, Fargo, North Dakota. We're here. What is that, a state trooper? Where? I think he's ahead of the us. The heater. The heater is here. Hello, Mom. Hello. She's so quiet. We're up here just talking, farming, and haven't heard a peep out of her for two hours. <laughs> it's good? been pretty good, hasn't it? <laughs> still with us, I guess. <laughs> so we are going to the Crary building. Odd. Well, we're, I know where we're going and somewhat of what we're going to be doing. But we are going to go tour their plant. There's the words. So, Mom's super pumped. We're going to get you an air reel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to learn how to drive in the city again. It's been only a couple of years. This looks familiar. Whoa, it's even in the Crary building. Where did that come from? <laughs> you made it all the way from Ohio for this tour, huh? I did. Walked. Everybody. Walked. <sighs> it's cold out there. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting a tour of the uh, factory. This is the, what did you say? This was the first building. Yeah. 6,000 square feet. Yeah. Now you're 200,000. Well, when are we adding on? on? Oh, you yes, can. There's more space, but in, in there's in scales trees, off. <laughs> or something's happened. You know, He's trying to get him to design a fan Everything for the top of our grain leg. You know, <laughs> the the tour's turned into suggestions. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's doing a good sell job on him. <laughs> so if you can hear over there, he's firing up the wood chippers for the first time since the factory. So they actually make wood chippers here um, also. It's pretty cool. Kind of smells like a small gas engine garage. So you build every pallet here yourself? Yes, we do. Wow. Exciting. Wow. Now this area smells like Menards. <laughs> so you, you're saying now is the time of the year that you are basically building inventory for, for next the year. busy season yep. come next fall. And for... we ship. I mean, we have a lot of a lot of our dealers are shipping. We're shipping to them early um, in January, February, March, and they're doing installations early on to be able to deliver mm -hmm. uh, headers and combos to their customers. Yep. So this is all kits for yep. like wind systems. Big top. I see yep. big top, so extensions for... Yeah, we can see some of our air reels uh, stocked over there as well. This is where they took the uh, sales guys and made you be shipping guys? Yes, this is where the uh, we run forklift and uh, uh, make sure everyone has product on time. Yeah? So how many kits a year can you put out if you need to? Uh, a couple thousand. Really? Yeah, we have capacity that, to do 2,000, 2,500 right now. And you're able to sell that many wind systems? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. Demand has been strong Good afternoon, everyone. for the last couple of years. Today Hello. is day 7 of the 12 days of Prairie Christmas. <laughs> the theme for today is Record Club, and the winner is Cody Masson in oh. South Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Masson is the winner of Cody Masson. We never win. <laughs> Where do we sign up for that? <laughs> yeah. you guys remember this thing? You know, this all looks a lot different than it's I envisioned it in, yeah. to be in my mind. Yep. It's literally just sitting here being put together. How many people put this together? Uh, there's three people working on it on any and given they, time. They start it From and scratch. finish it, the same three guys. It ain't like a line. No, no, the assembly will happen here and then weld and everything and paint will happen in the okay. other area. Every bolt gets put yep. in by the same guy, yep. wires. Yep. Oh, I could get on board with this job. <laughs> that sounds fun. Do you remember when he came out and we demoed one of these? 
I think, uh, I think we're going to do it again, hopefully. We'll see you have a better experience. You redesigned some stuff after... Yeah, after your suggestion. Yeah? Yep, that's why. So when does that check come? When does that check come? Uh, that'll be coming just in time for Christmas. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. So from my understanding, they changed how that beast feeds itself. So now it's got a big beater that you can fore and aft uh, and raise and lower, I believe, to feed that machine. So Hello? it'll work a lot better in uh, snow, mud, everything that I was experiencing. It should be designed a lot better than that. This looks familiar. This looks a lot different than ours. Where's Mitch? I need Mitch to tell me why this all looks different than ours. We have the same one, only they've done some changes here. Look at this jig here. Wow. This is fascinating. So what has changed on this? There's a lot of different stuff that is different than ours. Yes, we, we've made some uh, product improvements across the board with this. Uh, we have tie-down areas, safety, shipping. Uh, yeah, shipping brackets, uh, more, re more removable pieces down here on the uh, knife face. Okay. Um, we've upgraded the cylinders so those can be disconnected. And we've also beefed up larger cylinders as well. And it's a little bit different color paint as well. What are those? This is, is for our, the, this is our new uh, universal hitch. So it's going to be easier adapted to different tractors on your farm. Okay. Um, you know, some some guys you know will share a plow between farms, and this will allow that to be transferred more easily. Because of like a two tracks, a lot different mount than like yes. our our yes. Yep, it'd be a steerable mount versus a, a, a standard mount, okay. and yeah. Well, we really like ours. Yeah, ours don't have all that fancy stuff on it. Your uh, what's the word? Squeak, 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 evolving. Yes, there it all, is. yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> continuous product improvement. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. You so, might need one of these, Dad. I didn't know they made them. <laughs> so, this does what? This goes on the end of your dock. This goes on the end of your dock at, it's your, all lake house. Yep, at your lake house. It's all low voltage. Um, it goes to a transformer on the beach or on the shore. Um, and it really just runs and sweeps. So we can see these, these tubes over here. You'll connect those, and they'll roll on the lake bottom. And it's all powered by the machine here. So you can see they'll catch How often does hill. that go around? Um, it'll usually make a sweep, uh, 300, 300 degree sweep in about 15 minutes. And then it just constantly runs back and forth on the bottom. And it just disturbs the lake bottom to keep the weeds from growing. And cleans out some silt as well. Interesting. Huh. How far out can you go? Tell him we need to talk later. How far? Uh, so how seven foot section. I think that, I think it's five or six rollers. I can't remember. I think it's six. So that's uh, 35, 41, 42 feet. And that's really depending on your regulations in your area that you've got to follow. So. Okay. If you're a rural follower. Yeah, you're rural followers. <laughs> <laughs> like your dad. Yeah, he always <laughs> follows all the rules all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> you know. I bet you next to nobody on earth knows what this machine is, I, including myself. You weren't listening. No, I was talking. What do you, what do you want to know? This listening. is a potato planter? This is an uh, air cup potato planter. It uses vacuum to hold the seeds on for singulation. Okay. So think of your row unit. Each one of these is just like your, your seed plate. This holds one seed, which in a potato is just a, is it going to be a whole potato, but most likely a chunk of potato that's been cut. And, and inoculated. Huh. So the hopper is over there, that is full of potato. It gets metered out by these bars, drop down into here, and this does, this is what does your singulation on each of the rows. So that goes on top of here. Yep. Okay. Let's go plant potatoes. It's so cool. <laughs> Grandma and Nancy would love that. Please tell me this is the combine. This is our new, or is uh, it a picker? No, what this is, is a combine. Is it a combine? I don't know. Is that what you call a potato combine? <laughs> is this a picker or a combine? It's a harvester. Neither then. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> this is a three-row harvester. Three-row. Oh my gosh, that would be slow. 
again, you remember your windrowers. You got those on the outside feeding this. Okay. So you can have so, large windrowers feeding a one or a two, three, or four row harvest. Okay, so you. Where's that thing? We don't have one in production right now. So okay. The wind rower or this so the the windrower. From my understanding, Doug, oh, this is fun. This is fascinating. It looks like I could use it for picking them up. They lift the potatoes out of the ground, they put them in windrows, and then this thing, which is very wide, picks up the windrows of potatoes, and then what, loads them in a truck? In the truck or cart? What's yeah, so this, this will load? go typically into a truck. Okay, so this would be where they yeah, that unfold. Boom unfold. Yeah. Man, this is cool. So what are the big fans for on this? Those are vine blowers, so you're taking up the potatoes, the vines, everything. Okay. And so you're taking up dirt, potatoes, vines, all that comes up, and the dirt falls through the webbing, the potatoes and vines, rocks, all move on in the inside. The fans will blow the vines out the rear of the machine. And then, like a compound. Yeah, a lot like Walking a compound. Walking out the back way. Yep. And, and this then is the what... Get separated at some point this is what takes the dirt off of the <laughs> potato, I guess. You probably don't want to get sucked into this. Yeah. This would hurt. And this this is really what this head does. This will do a separation of the rocks. So the potatoes go inside, and the vacuum will pick up the potato because it's lighter, bring it to another conveyor, and the rocks and trash will go through. And then the lighter stuff, uh, vines and everything, will also get blown out. Hmm. Man, um, it's a giant vacuum too. I'm going to need a demo to understand that. <laughs> we gotta start planting potatoes. So now, you think that go. works in Chicago gumbo? Oh no. Look at this thing. This is a vacuum. Look at the size of that blower. So this is where the potatoes, I guess, you bring this to the factory and they clean them before they put them in the warehouse. Don't ask me for knowledge on this, but it's really cool. Can you guys hear that? That's all welders, all that buzzing. This is uh, where they fabricate, cut, make everything, or a lot of it. Pete could lift this. Yeah, where is he? He's sick as heck. I don't want to up show him. That is not solid steel. <laughs> Holy cow. You can see this is what, 5 eighths material, I think, that we cut on here. Or we can do any kind, any thicknesses. And then a big laser cuts that, or that's yep, water? that's laser. So this is the welding area. Is it? The welders, what makes it so much warmer? Uh, I would say that's probably our oven over here. So everything powder coat, everything we build is powder coated. It goes through a, a wash cycle, and then it goes into an oven right there to dry off everything. <laughs> and then they'll apply the powder, and then it goes into a curing oven that runs half the length of our building. So okay. that oven's putting out a lot of heat. Yeah. So this is the track that goes all the way around. Oh, yep. it's moving. Yeah. It automatically moves. Yes. And then it goes, gets washed, dry, painted. Yep. And comes out here. It goes out actually through a curing oven now. You have to, to, to melt the, the powder coat onto it. So then these guys put it all on racks for assembly. Yes. For pallets. Yes. Wow. So there's the oven that's cooking on the powder coating or the paint. How warm did you say it is? I think it's about 450. Wow. I'm amazed it ain't warmer standing here. Maybe on the other side. Yeah. Is it just me or is it... Do you have the overwhelming urge to touch it? Oh, yeah. I wanted to. I really want to touch it. The whole time we were walking through, I was like, wonder if we're dry. That's what I wanted to do. I really want to, but I have a feeling they're very warm. They got the door open. Crafts open with a one by four. You could lay down in there right now. That'd feel good. <laughs> we finally found the way out. Right. This is so big. I didn't know where we were going. Thought they were going to start making us work the line. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Fargo, North Dakota. Is this what it's like? I didn't bring my shovel. <laughs> Look at my pickup. Oh my gosh. Well, it's event day. What's gonna happen? I have no idea. But podcast, meet and greet, something like that. We're gonna have fun with it. Oh, that is really just so nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh man. I hate winter. It's definitely not Florida. <laughs> it's not Florida, he said. Are you ready for this? We'll see if I pass out just 
pretend I'm not there. <laughs> you know, I hope we don't crash. Oh, 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 oh. oh. You're gonna have to. Hey, hey, what hey. are we gonna do? I gotta clean this up or we'll die. Here, let me hold them. Oh, Amy. <coughs> Okay, we need a snow plow for the front of this thing. I cannot believe this. This <clears throat> is just... We're gonna be late. You know, I've been here many times, but it's never been this empty. This is Fargo too. Fairgrounds. This is where Big Iron Farm Show is at. Man, it's just beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> This is starting to look overwhelming. Well, this is the uh, prairie full pod. Actually, the reason we're up here for a uh, little meet and greet and live q and A, I I guess. And hanging out with these guys and some, some fans that bought tickets. So it's gonna be fun. Everyone's super pumped, right? We're super pumped, we're ready. Having fun. We're nervous. I'm nervous. We're having fun. <laughs> We're excited. So the event is over. It is the next day. We had a blast. Granted, we got put out of our comfort zones extremely, didn't we? I don't know what you're talking about. I was right in the element of everything that I'm used to doing. <laughs> Anyways, we are trying to make it back home, and unfortunately, the weather has been absolutely horrible, and this is what the roads are looking like. Yeah. After half a mile, oh. take the exit right. You said not to listen to her? I wouldn't know why you'd want to take a right. Oxbow, then turn left. Oxbow? I've never even heard of that town. What's the matter with this lady? Hello, lady? <laughs> you know what you're talking about? Who do I listen to? Why is it... What is all these I don't questions? know what all this thing is. I don't know how to run my truck is what the, it comes down to. We're not turning. We're not listening. Might as well just turn her off. She don't know what she's talking about. Drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, I want to uh, say a huge thanks for uh, having us at the event to Crary, giving us a tour of the plant. That was really interesting and fun. And uh, it was a blast hanging out with Brian's farming videos and the millennial farmer. Yep. Beautiful day for a drive. Couldn't ask for better conditions. I think your plow wing broke off back there. I wish I had one. That would be cool. Yeah, if you look at the cameras, I got piles everywhere in the yard. What? How deep is it? Deep? Deep. Ditches are completely full. Cool. We could be shredding the pow right now. We could be shredding the pow. <laughs> yep, it's pow. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, this God. is not a fun drive. It's 45 mile an hour interstate driving. Fine. I don't just, know why we don't go faster. They're just piling up vehicles in the road it's ditch everywhere. Bad. I think you got a TRX, so I'll pile that thing up. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna do my best to not do that. Stay tuned. Is Randy running the big uh, snow blower? I think the road is right there, right? TRX drives itself. Right now we're just uh, more or less going by feel. If you drive in the winter time enough, you can tell when the crown of the road is this way or, or that way. You really don't need to see anything. You could put blindfold on, couldn't you? We're good until we need to stop. Right, and we don't we don't need to stop for another what 100 miles. So just put her down. We got thir 13 more miles till catastrophe. You better slow down a little. <laughs> oh, now we've gone from white roads to ice roads. Well, we'll be home sometime tonight. It should be dark. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't drink that stuff. It's bad for you. You know, sometimes you just need it the next day. Well, let me get back to my reading. <laughs> what has he done? Oh my goodness. He's made big piles. Look at all the big piles of snow. Follow his trail. 
Look out, Brody. We're coming behind you. <laughs> oh my gosh, we've got a lot of work to do. He's got piles of snow everywhere. This is payloader, Duggo. Oh yeah. Oh, mercy, dog. Look at me, just pulled up here like some sort of... Right. We're going to have paint lines on here for you? <laughs> I just pull up as totally as dumb as I could possibly do. All right, guys, we made it home safe. We appreciate everyone that came to the event, and we will see you in the next video.